be making bases. Hey, what's going on, YouTube? It's your man, Ever J Music. I'm the owner of Beat Making Basics, and we're back again with another dope video. If you're new to the channel, please go ahead and do me a favor subscribe to the channel so you know when we're going to post. We're going to never miss a video, okay? Turn those notifications on, all that fun stuff. But look, let's go ahead and jump into today's video. What I'm going to be doing is showing y'all two different ways that y'all could actually master your music, okay, in Logic Pro 10. One way is going to be with a stock plugin, and the other way is with a third party mastering plugin. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into it. I had this beat right here. Um, I, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play the beat without any of the plugins, and then we're going to start adding the plugins. I'm going to show you the two different plugins you can use one stock, which is free, comes with Logic, one is paid, and uh, it's a third party. Okay, so there's the beat. That's what the beat sounds like. Now, as you can see here, it sounds pretty good. The mix is pretty solid, but it does clip just a little bit. And I feel like it could be just a little bit louder. OK, and that's really what mastering is going to do is going to actually put that finishing, polishing touch on your music and then also bring the levels up to uh, industry standard. And so that's the whole point of mastery. So let's just go ahead and work with the first plugin, which is going to be a stock plugin, and it's called an adaptive limiter. OK, and what you could do to get that is uh, basically go to your audio effects on the stereo out and then scroll down to dynamics and then adaptive limiters right there. So I already obviously have it ready to go here. I'm going to go ahead and plug it up like this. And this is pretty much what it will look like. So the first things that you want to make sure that you do is make sure this true peak detection is on and make sure the ceiling output is at least at negative uh, one dB. From there, you know, you are going to probably want to go ahead and push the gain up to maybe like two or three. All right. And that what that's going to do is bring the loudness up without making it peak. OK, so now let's listen to it again a little bit before the plug-in and then I'll turn the plug-in on you'll see the difference so as you can see it's a little bit more louder a little kind of more in your face it's a subtle it's a subtle thing but I mean it's gonna make a difference trust me now, the next plugin we'll talk about is Ozone 9. It's from Isotope. Um, and pretty much, I would just come down here. You can get it like that. Put stereo, okay? Now, I already have it plugged in up here. I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And as you can see, this is Isotope. Now, they have different ways that you can, you know, master it. Um, you, most of the time, this maximizer, that's what this adaptive limiter is, basically, is a maximizer. But they have all these other different plugins on here as well, or different settings on here as well. And what you could do, man, is just go to these presets and select what you want. I'm on this modern hip hop preset. And um, I pretty much adjusted this a little bit. So um, brought the ceiling down to negative one and the threshold is at three. It's pretty much just at the same settings as um, this adaptive limiter here, except for you have this vintage comp and this equalizer. Okay, so let's just go ahead and listen to it again before and then after with ozone. We'll see kind of which one works better. Okay, that's that's without the plug in. Let's turn it on. There you go. And as you can hear, you know, it really did boost that frequency up a little bit. And that's what we were wanting. We wanted it to be boosted just a little bit without it like sounding bad. You know what I mean? Um, what I'll do before we end this video is I'm actually going to play the two plugins together and we'll see which one sounds better. Okay. So this is Ozone. And then 
Now what we want to do is we'll check out this additive limiter. So tell me if y'all fit if you hear a difference. That's that one. Again, we'll do ozone. And of course, this is without either plug-in. Very noticeable difference. In my personal opinion, I mean, you can pretty much get the same result for the most part using other, um, you know, plugins along with this additive limiter. But ozone is pretty solid. I feel like this one sounded a little bit smoother, um, a little bit like, for instance, on this additive limiter, or excuse me, adaptive. I can't even want to call it an additive. Is adaptive limiter. Um, it sounded a little uh, distorted. Just kind of listen to it. More so on the kicking on the kick drum, but compared to ozone, when I turn that one on, it smooths it out, and I'm I'm really it's really based off of the uh, EQing that it's doing here. Also, this vintage comp is helping make it sound a little more smoother. All right, y'all, that's going to be it for this video. I appreciate y'all watching. If you want more content like this, feel free to hit me up in the comment section. Let me know what y'all want me to do next. Appreciate y'all. We'll see you in the next one.